Oh no, that's the wrong one. There we go. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another... Thing. I don't know what to call this. It's chess tactics, whatever. You know what this is. Um... Yeah, it's been a couple of days since I did a video, so I wanted to do one, and then, um, uh, and then a random YouTuber commented in one of my videos, my latest one, the one before this one. So I want to say thank you. I don't know how you found the video, but that's really fucking cool. Uh, you've inspired me to make more videos, so thanks a lot. And his comment was to edit the videos down. Uh in the future I'll probably do that but right now I um I'm still feeling it out I'm trying to figure out what uh I don't know what the fuck I'm feeling out I'm just making the videos and hopefully if I I don't know I don't know man I don't know what to tell you I don't know anything but I do know what we're doing in the video today we're going to be doing more checkmate tactics and we are going to be doing the same thing we've been doing all this time uh we are going to do it on harder today i think which will force me to read the positions better calculate further but the idea is the same as it has been in the past however many goddamn videos i've done which is what have i been doing i've been Looking at the puzzles, reading the board, which is a thing that novices need to focus on, such as myself, and then trying to figure out the puzzle. Speed is not the focus here. Uh, quality. Getting the right answer is the most important part here. So, yeah, let's read the board and let's get to it. So... Uh, let's see here. I've got five pawns. He's got six pawns. He's got two rooks. I've got one rook. We both have queens. And he has two minor pieces, so he's up by eight points right now. Um, actually, I didn't calculate the pawns right, so nine points. So, yeah, that's, that's not good. Uh, things I do feel good about, though. My king is safe in its own little pawn shield whereas his king is slightly exposed and can lead to dangerous situations so looks like we might have gambited it a bit to be able to become a bit more aggressive looks like his bishop his light squared bishop is out in the middle of nowhere in a real game i might have just taken without even thinking about it uh because he took my rook that's very sad uh, okay, so yeah, I would only be, uh, at the end of my turn, I'd only be down three points? Wait. What would I be down by? I'd be down a rook. Okay, yeah, I'd be down three points, four points because of the pun as well. Eh, that's not great. Uh, and that's definitely not the answer we're looking for. With how exposed this king is in a real game, would I have looked for tactics? And the answer that I'm happy to say is yes, I would have, because Eric Rosen has inspired me to play, or not play, <laughs> I was going to say play more uh, dubious lines, but that's not true. Eric, please don't worry. No, I'm, I'm playing safe lines. What I was going to say is he has... Um, he has inspired me to play more tactically aggressive things because, one, as a beginner, I think it's good to focus on tactics and get better at that. And two, it's just so much fun. So, yeah, uh, let's go back to the board and think about if we have any serious threats in the next move, if it was Black's move. And it looks like, no, the only piece that he has that could potentially become aggressive right now uh, is honestly his bishop and he, it's done what it can do everything else is either behind pawns or just stuck somewhere in the back rank so that's kind of nice um, so I don't have to worry about my king safety 
So let's look at his king safety. What are some candidate moves that come to mind? Uh, knight takes comes to mind. Pawn takes comes to mind. Both on f6. That is the other part of my videos. The purpose is to use big boy words and actually speak an annotation rather than uh, just saying takes takes. Because uh, I don't know how to read the board. It's not second nature to me. And I feel like if you want to get good at any system, knowing how to speak the language is very important. Okay, going back to what we're doing here. Uh, I have some ideas. So one of the ideas is that the knight here controls these two squares, which I feel like that's something. There's something important there. Um, another thing is that this queen controls this diagonal. Which What diagonal is that? That's a C8 to H3 diagonal. So, yeah. That's a good diagonal to control. It doesn't leave him with a lot of flight squares. And in fact, indeed, right now, we would say he has zero flight squares. Um, what we need is an opening to attack him with, which I think is where this pawn takes bishop comes from. Uh, the line I'm thinking of is pawn takes f6, pawn takes f6, because king can't take and king has nowhere to run and then after pawn takes f6 again we will do rook to e1 and there should be no blockers there's one blocker that's the bishop uh, and so the bishop will go to e4 to block and then our rook will take that and I think that'll be mate so let's check it out yeah all right very cool very cool that was awesome. Long puzzle, it says. Made in three so long. I don't know. All right, let's uh, let's look at the board. He has three pawns. I've got five pawns. That's love that. He has two minor pieces, and I only have one minor piece. So at some point. Uh, we traded a minor piece for a couple pawns. I'm down one point. We both have our rooks. No queens on the board. Uh, he is very exposed where I am very safe. So I feel good. My only worries would be something like this to start some kind of horrible checkmating line. And of course, I always have to worry about the back rank mating potential. That being said, my rook is on the back rank, so I'm not too worried, and it's my turn. Um, so yeah, let's just kind of look at some of the squares that we're controlling here. Seeing as how he is very exposed, again, I would have probably tried to look for some kind of line with a king. Am I good at it in real games right now? No. No, I'm not. But, eh. Eh. Uh, this bishop right now controls these two squares. Uh, actually, this square is the only one relevant to the king right now. That's the d3 square. And then this, uh, my rook here is controlling the fifth rank. So that's pretty good. Uh, and we also have the b file. It's okay, but uh, he has some flight squares, so it's going to take a couple of moves for us to mate him. The first move that I see is just rook to b4. It's safe, it's guarded, and we're taking care of two ranks immediately, which looks pretty good. Uh, let's think about any kind of blocking or counterattacks he might have at that point. Can he take my rook? No. Can he block the rook? No. So then the only flight square he would have at this point would be to c3. At which point we could do rook to c5. The issue there being that the knight or the bishop could block. So let's say the knight blocks first, right? If the knight blocks, what the 
fuck do we do? I'm sorry for swearing. That was that was inappropriate. If the knight blocks, is there a way to keep on pressuring the king while he's on c3? I just don't really see it. I don't see anything. And if the rook were to take the knight, bishop would take, and then I would have the rook here, but the king is right next door. So that doesn't go anywhere. That doesn't feel good at all. So I don't think rook taking either on the bishop or the knight is the correct answer. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. I really like this move, though. Ah, okay. What about instead of rook to... Also, what the fuck is this? What is this line? Oh, this is just me saying it. I control this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. Instead of going to c5, let me rescind. So we do b4, rook to b4, check. King goes to c3. That's the only square he can. And then instead of c5, we do e3, rook to e3, check. No blockers this time. And then we would control this file here. Bishop would still control all of these, so I guess uh, the c2 square actually became relevant. And uh, that actually looks like the clean mate that we need. Let's just double check to make sure that I'm not doing something stupid. Rook to b4 check. Are there blockers? No. Uh, what are the squares that the king has? He only has c4, c3 I mean. And then after moving to c3, rook to e3, anything that can take away or block the rook? Nope. And that would be checkmate. All right. Fairly easy puzzle. Just took me a second. Uh, yeah, it's the combination of squares and what they control and where I can move that only in this puzzle and the previous puzzle have I realized how important it is to start considering what squares we're controlling. That seems to be a, I don't want to say shortcut, but a very effective method of seeing potential tactics or forced patterns or, you know, some kind of force moves that can happen. Uh, especially for mate mating nets, I guess. And also, as a reminder to myself and to everybody else, we figured out what the name of that mating pattern was, where the queen and the king, and then there was the, you know, his own pieces blocking him. It was a dovetail. And, uh, yeah, I just want to remind myself again what a dovetail was. And then we also figured out what an Anastasia and Greco was. Uh, that's gone. That's already gone. <laughs> ah, that's very depressing. Okay, well, let's read the board. Let's move on. As uh, Harper, Tyson Harper said, I need to edit these down. Uh, but I like to imagine people like to just hear me fucking ramble like a crazy old guy. I don't know. Maybe that's the charm of my channel probably isn't uh let's see here he has six pawns i have five pawns two rooks one queen each we're good he also has a minor piece why in these puzzles do i never have more pieces eh, that's not true there are some ones that do um just wanted to bitch a little bit um uh, does my king feel like it's in danger a little bit I'm not feeling good about this back rank here. This is kind of weird, but that being said, I don't think there's a lot of methods for the bishop to start messing about thanks to this triple battery that I have. Um, what is the name of this battery? Alakine's battery? I don't know if that's true. Al um, chess battery. 
battery. There's a name for that battery. What is it called? Here it is. Maybe it didn't have a name. Maybe it's just a battery. Alkine's gun. It is a formation in chess named after former chess champion. It is a specific kind of battery. Mmm, what makes it so specific? The idea comes of placing two rooks stacked one behind another and the queen at the rear. Oh, that is the optimal gun. Yes, all right, the optimal battery. That is definitely so much better. Ugh, and in this, he also has a bishop? God damn you, Alakine. That's fucked up. That is some fucked up shit. God, I would hate to be in that game. Okay, so let's go back to what we were talking about. Am I under threat? Kind of. So I should probably take care of this as fast as I can. Am I that worried, though? Not really. These rooks on the back rank, they can never challenge my battery. This bishop, it can never use the E file. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I could probably find a safe square at some point. So I don't feel too scared about my king. Uh, on the other side, though, his king, his, uh, yeah, his pawn shield has become a nightmare and actually has become even worse for him so a couple moves come to mind the first one of course is the queen to g4 check and then trying to find some way to wrangle this king up into here to mate him that would be an idea and we can calculate that the other interesting idea i had was rook check sacrifice and then if pawn takes, then maybe like rook to h7. But that being said, there's also king takes, and I don't know where that leads. A lot. So two lines that I'm thinking of both need calculations. I think the queen one looks kind of promising. Less interesting, but kind of promising. So let's take a look at that. Uh, queen to g4 check. Only flight square for the king would be g6. I could move the rooks either way, but I think the idea would be to stifle his movement. So we would want to keep this rook here. And I would say move this rook up here because the queen is controlling these two squares anyway. All these bad arrows. Terrible arrows. So yeah, king moves to g6, rook to e6, check. Then there would be rook to f6 to block. And then we could do rook takes, rook check. Uh, king is forced to take, at which point we could bring the queen back. But then he has the h5 square to run back to again. So that's close. That's really, really close. But not all the way there. And I also realize about that uh, rook sacrifice to have the other rook checkmate thing. That's not possible. This diagonal, just as I have this e-file battery that's so powerful... Black has this diagonal, and it is just way too powerful. So that's that's probably not going to happen. So with that in mind, I think doing queen to g4 is still the way we would want to go. But I'm having a hard time figuring out the correct line for this. I love that the king is forced onto this diagonal. Because that makes this diagonal a lot less stronger, especially if we were like to have the queen right there. Oh, that'd be great. But that's not the case. Queen to g4 check, king to g6. Another idea that I'm having in my mind is like rook takes at this point. Pawn takes. What can the queen do? Not much. 
Queen could move back. Rook could check. Or I mean rook could block. Queen to e6 check. Rook to f6. And then I wish I could say queen to g8, but the other rook is there to stop that from happening. What I'm trying to do is get the king to go back because this pawn is gone in hopes of this, forgetting that this diagonal still exists because I'm clearly an idiot. Another nice idea would be if this pawn just isn't there at all. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be very nice. I would be very happy. I'd be very, very happy about that. Another interesting idea that I didn't consider is the move G4 with an en passant, potentially. But yeah, so g4, king would have to move here, and then queen would take, and that's that's a mating pattern that we're all aware of. I don't know what that one's called. We should look that up, though. Um, maybe it's just a pawn, pawn queen mating pattern. Maybe it doesn't have a special name. It probably does, though. Everything has a special name most of the time. Um... But yeah, so if we do g4, there's going to be the en passant block with uh, g3. f takes g3. Does that change anything about this puzzle, though? Does that make anything easier or harder? I still have queen to g4. This pawn's gone. I don't think that changes anything, though. Yeah, it's not like any secret diagonals or squares are <sighs> given to me. I really do like this idea, though. So, if we could make that work, that would be great. But this pawn would have to not exist for that to happen. But this rook is also there. Also, I don't have any attackers on this pawn, so it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, this is a tricky one. I'm not smart enough for this. This is hard. This is probably one of those things that Tyson was mentioning that I could cut down when I'm failing at puzzles. Because if I cut this down, I'd look like a genius. I'd be like, oh yeah, I read that and was able to find an answer immediately. But, uh, yeah, sadly this is a reality of the situation. This video is longer because I have to think and because I can't find the pattern. And because I don't have any editing skills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to make this G4 work, but with the F takes G3, I don't... I don't really see anything good. Uh, takes, takes, or check, takes. Then rook takes. Huh? And then pawn takes. And then... Queen, and then king here. King could also go there. Uh, I don't think that's right. It just opens up the board, and there's so many shenanigans. that This would be a very, very challenging puzzle if that was the case. It's probably something very easy that I'm clearly not seeing here. You know what's always fun to look at? There's always a queen sack as well. What does a queen sack give us? Uh, queen takes h6. King takes. And I got nothing. <laughs> hmm. 
The queen to g4 seems like a very good move. But I'm having a very difficult time trying to figure out what to do afterwards. Other ideas I can think of from there is queen to g4 check, king to g6, and then check this out. Rook to g7 check, king is forced to take, rook takes g5, pawn takes g5, queen takes g5 check, but then that's met with queen blocks on g6, so that's probably not it. I am actually befuddled. My ability to see the line is challenged. And I think that's good. That means once I get this puzzle wrong, I'll be able to see what I've missed, which is probably something that I've seen before and I've forgotten. <laughs> that's generally how it goes. I mean... Yeah, I don't have any kind of line, so I'm just going to make a move and move on with the puzzle. We can't sit here all night. Although, calculating is probably really good for me. So I'm going to do that. That was the right move. Oh, sadly, I just don't see the answer, man. I don't see the answer. If rook moves to e6 for check, there's a rook block. What's your answer to that, you son of a bitch? Why am I swearing to myself? Why is there so much swearing in this one? I don't know. Not sure. If my pawn could move. Oh, my beautiful pawn. That'd be nice. But that takes too much tempo. I'm just going to go with the rook to e6 move. That's probably wrong, but let's see. No, I was right. Yeah, I'm just befuddled. This is how I would have thought this would go. But I, tw I, I twasn't, I twas twasn't have an answer for this. Oh! I'm so silly. When I calculated this line earlier, I had said take on f6, king takes on f6, and then queen to e6, which would be a checkmate, except I had thought that the king was on g6, and I thought he would run away to h5. So I had just misplaced the king. So the issue here was that my calculation was off because I wasn't able to remember the board state during my calculation, which is a very, very understandable beginner issue that anybody can have, and I just had it. And that's very em embarrassing because this is very easy. This is a checkmate. Uh, okay, well, you know, Tyson, if, uh, <laughs> if I could cut down videos, that, that would have been one of those that I might have cut down, but... Yeah, honestly, I don't know. It's hard for me because doing practice videos, I feel like part of the part of the value in the these type of videos uh, that I'm making is I kind of want to show people how to fail and how to be okay with failing and then how to learn from the failures. I think there's a lot of great content already out there for how to do things right. The content I want to make as a beginner is more about what things can I do wrong and how do I fix those mistakes over time. Um, but yeah, that was, that was challenging. Let's move on to the next puzzle. Enough of my fucking talking. 
Ho! Let's see here. I have a minor piece, and I have a queen, and he has an extra rook on me. I have five pawns. He has four pawns. So I'm down like four points. Feel kind of bad. Uh, my king, very exposed. His king, very exposed. Threats all over the place. I don't feel comfortable here. Yeah, that looks very... Oof. I don't even want to... That's scary. Thankfully, it is my turn. So this is going to have to be a forced tactic. Would I have been able to search for the tactic... Yes, his king is exposed, but I would have been very worried about my king, and probably this late in the endgame, as I play mostly Blitz, uh, I don't know if I would have had the time to look for this tactic, which sucks, because that's cool that there's a checkmate possibility with only the king and the knight here. So let's take a look. First move that I see as a candidate move is a3. There's a block by the queen there. That's possible. That seems like a no good situation for me. Uh, second move that I see is c3. The queen cannot block that. So now I think we're playing the right game. King has to move between these squares. Of course, the knight controls that one. So there's no d1 for him. He will have to move to b2, at which point I'll do queen c2, and there's, again, no blocks, no ways to stop that. So the king is going to have to move to a1. That is the only square he can move to. And then the line would be c1, and be it blocked by the queen or the knight, the next move would be knight to c2, which would then, uh, yeah, checkmate the king because whatever piece is blocking on b1 is pinned with my queen and cannot do a thing. So let's go over it again. Queen to c5, check. C <laughs> queen to c3, check. I know how to read the board. Shut up. Uh... <laughs> King to b1, queen to c2 check, king to a1, queen to c1 check, whichever piece blocks, knight to c2 will be checkmate. Let's see if that's true. And boop. That feels very good. All right. Previous puzzle, wasn't very good at it. This puzzle, rocked the shit out of it. So that's great. Always feels good to rock the shit out of something. That's a saying, right? Yeah, I'm sure. All right, let's read the board. I got so many pawns. Pawns for days, and he's one. He has one less pawn than I do. Uh, how many pawns does he have? He has six, so I have seven. Okay, and this is the only open file in the game. That's pretty hilarious. I've had games like this. Basically, you just trade off pieces and you have nothing left. That being said, way to go, Black. Opening up his uh, pawn shield, sacrificing a minor piece, it seems. He's got two minor pieces. I only have one. And then, of course, the rooks are on the board, but these are the only two relevant rooks. These two rooks are undoing nothing. Uh... I have to be ever eternal and wary of the back rank mate situation, but I got a rook, so I'm not too worried. And I mean, he's got a couple moves, but what? He's nah, not worried, not worried about his position. I am intrigued about what I can do to him, though, because this looks promising. This looks like if I. If I do a couple of things, he might, he might, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm thinking like king takes, and then that looks pretty good. Um, that being said, I guess he could always run g2. 
So let's just try to figure out a potential candlelit line here. Candlelit, candlelit line. Yes. Let's look for that candlelit line. Um. There's a lot of blockers. There's a lot. Yeah. This is not easy. See mer. Something interesting that I see right now is rook to g4. I'm going to look at this line first. Rook to g4 forces king to take there. It would be so cool if I could do queen to h4 right afterwards, but then there's knight take, so that's not it. Rook to g4, king takes h3. I can't do queen to h6 because the queenie queen would take me on there. If only I could get to h5, that would be stupendous. That does not seem to be the case, though. Rook to g4, king takes h3. <sighs> queen to f5 is too slow. Oh! There would be queen to f, queen takes f3. Yum, 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 yum. Yes. Uh, rook controls all of the fourth rank. There's no blockers that can stop the queen on the third rank. And the king would have no places to move. And the queen would defend the rook. So, yeah, let's read that again. Rook to g4, king takes h3. Queen takes f3, mate. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Alright. Let's see here. He has so many more pawns than I do. Oh man, I forgot the thing that I was going to do, which is to look at the game to a certain point. Um, yeah, we should definitely do that after I read the board. Uh, hua. Or would it make more sense if I look at the game first and then read the board? That probably makes more sense. So let's go back like 10 moves or a couple moves here. It looks like I went back like 8 moves, 7 moves. I know how to count. And let's take a look at the board here right now. Pretty equal on pieces. Pretty equal on pieces, actually. Um, yeah. In. Yeah. Looks like we're pretty equal on pieces at this point. Things are still shaken up. His knight is in our territory, and that is a solid knight. That knight is pretty much worth a rook at this point. It is dangerous. Damn, that's a good knight. I would, I would love that knight. Alright. So he's moving... Black's moving his knight to try to get rid of this because it is way too powerful. White takes. Alright. Okay, okay. I, I'm wondering if instead of white taking he might have tried to do something to put more pawns to defend so that he could have a nice pawn chain at the end of it instead of taking. I think generally what I've learned from chess is rarely do you want to take on an exchange because uh, you can, instead of taking it, if you benefit from the exchange, you can find ways to set up the exchange to be even more beneficial. Um, I don't know if that's always true, though. Anyway, the knights are gone. That's a huge shame, because that was a super good uh, knight. Ooh, but this pawn move, the pawn takes is beautiful. This pawn is pinned. Can't take. Queen moves out of the way. Pawn takes another pawn. Pawn takes. Rook takes. So, yeah, he's gotten three pawns out of just one pawn. That's spectacular. At which point, what do we do? Are we going to threaten the queen? No, we're going to go for a pawn. Okay. Well, that allows for the rook to take more pawns, though. So, I guess there's that. We're now uh, pushing the queen around. The queen is saying, haha, sure. But then we have interesting potentials here. Go here, take. I don't know. Uh, okay. We align the rooks into a battery, 
And then at this point, the king thought it would be wise to make a flight square. So this is where we are. Interestingly enough, I wonder if h4 was too much. I think h3 would have been better in this case because this allows for rook to take and own all of the h file. Did I say the h square earlier? I meant the h4 square. You guys know what I'm trying to say. I know how to say things. Um, so yeah, let's read the board now. I think he's up by two pawns, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and we have three. Cool, cool, cool. We both have queens, we both have rooks. These pawns, eh, I'm not too worried about them. Uh, am I worried about my king safety? Yes, a little bit. There are still moves that can definitely hinder my development, especially especially with his other rook in my area. But I do have the rook battery, and I think it can probably block anything that's coming our way. Uh, the pawns would actually become the worry with the battery thing, but... Ah, doubled pawns are so slow anyway. And his king is so exposed. We definitely have something here. In a game, would I have been able to find something? Or would I have even started looking? No, probably not. No. Yeah, at this point, I would have probably been so focused on pawns as well. Being down two pawns in the end game would be... Uh, Devastating feeling, definitely. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, first move that I see is rook to d1. Rook takes rook, rook takes rook. Rook takes rook, rook takes rook. Check. At which point we have a potential blocker here. That would be absolutely terrible. That is not the move he would probably want to make. He does not want to sacrifice the queen when there is a potential flight square but if the queen if the king does go to that flight square that's just mate immediately so this being the computer best moves and all queen will block okay this does allow potentially for something if queen blocks and rook takes there is now there is now king to f2 So for me to force and to uh, force the king while keeping my rook defended, I would have to probably do queen to d2. Or, ooh, I love this. It's like a reverse dovetail. Queen takes on h4, my god. Uh, I would still have the diagonal on the rook. The rook controls this file and this rank and the king would have no flight squares he would have a blocker though pawn to g uh, g3 and then ooh, that is tricky actually man i thought i almost had it but it ain't so so rook to d1 check rook takes rook rook takes rook d1 check Queen blocks on e1. Rook takes queen. King to f... F what? King to f2? I don't know what happened to my brain there. That was frightening. Uh, and then queen to h4. Check was what I was thinking. But then there's that. And I mean, I'm winning. I'm definitely winning, but because I could de then do a queen to d6 take, and then I have a queen eat all of these pawns up, gobble gobble, push this pawn, win. But that's not that's that is not the name of this game. Blah 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 blah. I'm just gonna finish that. Um. Yeah, rook to d1, rook takes d1, rook takes d1, check, queen blocks, rook takes on e1, king to f2. All right, well then let's go with this uh, this route here, the original route that I was thinking of. 
queen to d2 check. Then he has a flight square over to g uh, g3. I wish I could do queen f2. I cannot. That is too close to him. I can't do queen to d6 because that rook's still there. That son of a bitch. Also, if this pawn wasn't there, then queen to g5 would be a possibility. But this rook does exist, so that is not something that can happen. Uh, yeah, I'm honestly having a hard time calculating this. It's not like the board's that complex either. But with so ma with such an open board and with so many possibilities of flight squares, I'm not exactly sure what the winning move here is if I do that. Is there another way to check him with the rook instead of the queen, perhaps? No, the king being on the diagonal next to the rook, there's not a lot of forcing moves that it can make. And after queen to d2, there's not a lot of forcing moves that I can make from there either. Meh. Meh, see, meh. I want to checkmate, see? Meh. I don't see the line, see? I don't see it, see? It's not easy. Yeah, that line does not look fruitful at all. Fruit. Delicious. I feel pretty confident about all of the D1 and back rank shenanigans, though. So I'm going to... Oh, my dicks! I just figured it out. Okay. It's rook to d1, rook takes d1, rook takes d1 check. At which point queen blocks on e1. Because if it doesn't, then we've already seen the checkmate. Instead of the rook taking, it's the queen takes. Covering this diagonal. Yes. And then the only place that the king can go now is here. Forcing the checkmate, it only took a little bit longer. The rook still controls the back rank. The queen controls all of the king's flight squares, and thus we win the game. Oh! Well, I'll say it as we go. Rook to d1 check. Rook takes d1. Rook takes d1 check. What the fuck? All right. This is not the line that I was thinking he would take. But this is valid. This is a very valid line. Um, uh, the calculation that I would... Oof, calculation that I would find here. Yeah, those are words. It doesn't make sense, though. Uh, the candidate move that I find here is... Uh, queen takes h4, check... And then the pawn thing happens. But this time, it's totally different. He doesn't have any flight squares. Or, I mean, he doesn't have uh, E3 as a flight square. And I will be able to do queen, uh, queen to H2. And not only does he not have a flight square, but the rook isn't on the E file, like in my previous calculations. So... Very different, very different. And then we control these two files. He doesn't have a flight square. All of his buddies are blocking him from leaving. And that looks like checkmate. Yay! I did it, Papa! I did it! Alright. Well, that was pretty good. Am I at 1900 now? Wee! Well, this seems like a pretty good place to pause, but I kind of want to finish this puzzle since I started it. So let's quickly read the board 
And I guess we had decided that instead of reading the board, I'm going to go back a couple of whatevers. Couple of turns, kind of read the board from there, and then see what progressed on to get a real good feel for the game. Uh, in this scenario, I don't like my odds. Wow, this looks pretty terrible. He has two minor pieces ahead of me. This and there's good coordination going on. His rooks are a little bit lackluster. This queen being in this uh, area, aggressive, very scary, very scary. But also this uh this combination of stuff is just not good if king moves anywhere it's uh well if king moves away from the pawn it's just bad so another move has to be taken to defend a pawn but do you really want to block your rook in this open end game just to defend a pawn no that's ridiculous um, so yeah this 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 feels like a bad time for black all right well he still did it. All right. So I feel like queen takes here would have been pretty good. I don't think there's a lot of continuations, though. I guess queen getting onto this diagonal from e4 makes more sense than queen taking and then being blocked because of this on the f5 square. Because after queen takes, there would be this. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's so many other interesting combinations that could potentially happen here. I don't know. But okay. So queen decided to do that. King moves away. Why? Why not this? Like, that seems... Ugh. That seems horrifying. Right? Or rook. Oh, it can't because of the rook. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so the queen is going there. Potentially trying to get it closer, I guess. Rook is blocking and defending this pawn now. Trying to set up a battery. I like. I like. Uh, okay, this rook is trying to get into the game. Oh, okay. I actually think uh, the queen coming to this diagonal is wonderful. Because then this uh, rook becomes pinned. Okay, the double battery. The battery has been started. What? How many defenders does he have? One, two. Okay. But he has three attackers. I think he just fucked up. He doesn't have enough attackers. Yeah. 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 Okay. I see. Was there a way he could have defended? That was the issue. In the end, there was just not enough things to defend that bishop. Yeah, the bishop might seem like a good temporary pawn shield or like a replacement pawn shield, but damn, dude. Damn. Okay. So from here, black definitely has possibilities. I mean, the rook is controlling the G file and the e, uh, third rank. The first move I see obviously is a uh, queen takes knight on h2 as i say that i forgot to take one last look at the board three pawns on his side three pawns on my side he is one minor piece up both of our kings are very very exposed mine is literally moments from being killed off but i have two huge pieces next to him if I was in this situation tactically, yes, I would. I mean, it's do or die at this point. So, yeah. Queen takes knight. Where does he run? He has to run here. So, is that the right move? I don't know. 
There's also queen to g2 instead of queen taking the knight. Is that a big difference? I don't know. That's interesting. Hmm. Uh, okay, then here's an alternative as well. Rook to g2. And the flight over there. I'm trying to get my queen onto e3. Because this is definitely a mating pattern that I don't remember the name of. But when we were looking for names of mating patterns on Wikipedia, this one did come up. And this would be the most baller time to use it. That being said, this queen is a pretty decent defender right now. Like, after the king gets to e1, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, both, all three of these look interesting. But keeping the queen on the third rank is probably the most promising if I want to do that mating pattern. But honestly, if the queen is on the second rank, then the rook can do the job as well. As long as the queen isn't here. But that's the biggest part about this. The queen is here. So how do we do this? Why is this so hard? Well, only thing we can do is try to calculate lines. So let's look at this initial line that I looked at. Queen takes knight on h2. King runs away. Nope. All right, let's move on to queen to g2. King runs away. Nope. Let's look at rook. Let's take a look at rook to g2. King runs away. None of them look good. I'm trying to figure out if this knight is a clue to something. It controls the square, and I'm wondering if the square is going to become a key point. I don't really see how it could be, though. In a real game, this would be the first thing I would do without even thinking. Rook to f3 doesn't work. There are three defenders there, and I only have two attackers, so that, that's, that's no good. Rook to g2. King runs away. Queen to g3. Queen takes. Rook takes. I'm down so much material. This one is also defended by the queen. This is also defended by the queen. Mm, I'm getting tired. This diagonal is defended by the pawn on b2. This king running away to e1 thing is really bothering the fuck out of me. <laughs> Is there a rook sacrifice I can do? Oh. Huh? Hmm. Can I somehow keep these two here, make him move there, and then trade that way? Uh. That is a very interesting thought. <sighs> no. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm... I'm not sure. I'm not sure of... What the... Queen to G2 looks pretty good because it controls more squares. But at the same time, after rook to... or king to E1, I'm... Not sure what I'm looking for, man. Man? I'm not sure, man. I wish at this point rook, queen takes, and then queen would do some kind of fancy knight move over there, but that that's not a thing. That's not a thing. It just seems like I need just one more extra move once I initiate the tactic, but I can't seem to figure out what that tactic is. I guess the benefit of queen takes here is that once king does move here, if there is some way that I could, uh, what is it? If I could check this king without the queen being able to do anything, then I would also have that. But that would lead to what? I don't know. I don't know. It's not good. It's not great. All right. But I don't think that's it. I do like that diagonal, though. Huh. <sighs> Yeah, I'm I'm stumped. I I don't think I understand this uh pattern. <sighs> Another thought that came to mind for a second is queen sacrifice on rook, but there's also rook takes rook, so it doesn't look like anything. Well, out of all of the things that I see, of all of the calculations that I can't seem to do, this Taking this seems like the most beneficial. I don't know if it's the right move, though. Probably not. Because it kind of moves me away from where I want my queen to be. So, you know, going with that logic, let's say I want to somehow end my queen on e3. Perhaps rook to g2 is the best way to go, then. And then we'll see if this was completely fucking wrong. Let's see. Oh, it was right. Great, but I still don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do. <laughs> la 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 la. I mean, rook to e2 is a forced move, but I don't think there's anything after that. Rook takes knight isn't a thing queen to f f6 is soon coming so this has to be some kind of force move it has to be papa it has to be but i have no goddamn clue what i'm supposed to do here <sighs> yeah what's the move there's like rook takes c2 too slow again too fucking slow I mean I guess he doesn't have to worry immediately I do control this square so he can't do that but there is also this like let's say he starts with this after I do something slow like that then he has that this is not looking good. No, sir. No bueno. There's also... Yeah, okay. I need both of these pieces... Okay, I don't need the rook to mate. That is true. That is absolutely true. I don't need the rook to mate. As long as I can keep the king where he is right now... I will be fine. So then the question becomes, how do I make the queen leave this diagonal or stop stop uh, defending this square while at the same time making sure that I can't get checked 
and forcing. That's so many things. Like if I do rook to g4, there's still that. I'd move it away, but I would have to move my king, so that doesn't seem right. Technically, if I'm able to control this square with my queen, I can just move my rook there as well. So then for something like that, there would be queen to h5. But again, it's not forcing. There's plenty of other lines that he can do. Doesn't seem that good. And if I take the knight, he would just trade down, and he'd be up a rook. And his pawns are definitely going to make it before any of these pawns make it to the other side. There are possibilities, but none of them look that good. Oh, shit goggles. I did not see this. Wow. I was so focused on keeping these files... I didn't even realize I had something as delicious as queen to e6. So queen to e6 is the right move. There's only a couple ways that he can block, and then that's just checkmate. So it took me a while to figure this out, mostly because I wasn't able to visualize this queen move. I was so focused on all of this that I didn't take into consideration multiple things. One, it doesn't matter that the queen controls this file anymore. It's not a necessary file. The king's stuck where he is. You just need to leave the rook there. Two, I was so focused on trying to checkmate from here that I didn't think of the possibility of checkmating from any of these squares while the rook still keeps this line. I got so focused on this pattern that we were talking about earlier that I didn't think about other possible patterns. So the issue there was that uh, I got tunnel vision. I got tunnel vision because I was trying to do something very close with the pattern that I would have recognized instead of trying to see all possible moves and seeing what could be possible from there. Well, this seems like a good place to stop. Am I going to remember this lesson? Probably not. I think if we had to put it into words, the lesson would be um, keep it simple and uh, don't get too focused on... I just got a reminder for the dentist right now. Wow, I really did not set that alarm correctly. But yeah, keep it simple and check all potential avenues. Don't get tunnel vision into a specific pawn pattern or <laughs> mating pattern or any kind of uh, proximity that is necessary. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of lessons there and probably I'm not going to remember most of them. But uh, this was fun. Uh, if you do find this and watch this, Thank you. Uh, if you found it interesting, please leave a comment. Tell me what I can do. I know I didn't listen to you, Tyson Harper, but I promise I will. I, I, I will figure out a way to edit these down at some point. Uh, I, I do want to get better at editing anyway, so I think that'll be fun. I appreciate you having watched this. I appreciate whoever you guys are watching this as well. I don't know how you find these videos. Uh, but very good, very good, very good. Uh, if you enjoyed this, excellent. I'm going to keep on doing this. If you don't like it, too bad. I'm going to keep on doing this. This is basically all I'm doing until I get to a point where I can do these harder and hardest puzzles. Just, just like this. You know, you see people like, you know, the pros, the IMs, all the title players. They get these kind of things. They're able to just... They don't even need to think about it. Uh, I'm probably not going to get to that speed, but I do want to get to a place where 
I can look at the board, read the board, and be able to figure out uh, make tactics at least five, five, uh, five moves, if not more, just easily. I don't think I'm there, but I think it has been helping me improve my game. I played a rapid game today against a guy, and uh, I squashed him twice, so that felt good. Um, yeah. Uh, I will try to make some real game videos at some point, but for now, it's just more training, guys. Just more, 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 so much training. Uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you later.